For the last few weeks, the last couple of weeks that I've been sharing, I've been talking to us about breaking the stronghold of self-imposed limitations. And I want to continue with that thought in hopes that as we continue to unpack it, it's helping you, helping us, to recognize any area where we find ourselves dealing with self-imposed limitations. It's easy to hear a word and receive it in the moment and then just kind of dissipates and we move on to the next thing. But it's in this season that I really believe that we, as the body of Christ, here it airs, that we really need to examine where we are so the Holy Spirit can help us to continue to grow, to continue to mature, to make the adjustments that we need to make so that we align ourselves with his purposes, his plans for our lives in this season of our lives. So often there's things that's going on in our life that's impacting us from being able to experience all that God has for us. Sometimes the conditions, sometimes the way that it has been still hinders us from how it could be. I want to really kind of speak to that, not kind of, I want to speak to that this morning as well. When we talk about self-imposed limitations, this is the statement or the phrase, thank you, Pastor Kelly, this is the statement or the phrase that we share. Self-imposed limitations are limits that have been set based on the way you think about yourself or your surroundings. They are usually thoughts of being inferior, inadequate, or unprepared. They are thoughts that lead to feelings of intimidation, fear, fear of rejection, fear of failure, and insecurities. They are thoughts and feelings that once brought down, once pulled down, reveal that the basis for them was false and unfounded. The mind is a powerful thing. The mind is a powerful thing. Thoughts are powerful. And all too often, if we are not intentional, we are held captive. We are bound by our thoughts, by our thought life. That's why the scripture talks about renewing our minds, because we can live in a space not recognize that you are bound by the way that you're thinking. And oftentimes it is self-imposed. I looked at various examples. We've looked at various examples over the past couple of weeks when we talk about uh, break, breaking the stronghold of self-imposed limitations. We looked at Moses. We talked about how Moses had challenges with seeing himself as being the leader that God was calling to bring the children of Israel, to bring his people out of Egypt. We looked at the 12 spies and how that uh, 10 of the 12 spies were held captive, bound by their self-imposed limitations. Even though they were a part of, if you will, all the miracles that God did in the wilderness. Sometimes if we are not really intentional, whether, we're take, whether we have a journal, a physical journal, or you're just making mental notes of all God has done for you, all that he's doing, we can live in the same space and miss out on what God wants to do because we're not allowing ourselves to not only just see what he's done, see what he's doing, but record it in our minds, in our hearts, in a way that helps to break off some of the doubt and the fear that often we find ourselves dealing with when situations come up. Only two of the 12 were willing to step into that promised land, even though they recognized there would be a battle, there would be fights, there would be oppositions. Because of the self-imposed limitation of the 10, it impacted all of the nation. Generations passed off, died, never seeing the promised land. And we have to be mindful of that. Then we looked at Joshua in Joshua 1, chapter 1 through, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, how Joshua was now called by God to lead the people of God 
when it really wasn't something he was like waiting in the wings to do. And I want us all to recognize that often God's going to call us when we least expect it. And we have to have worked through the self-imposed limitations, the way that we see ourselves or the way that we see ourselves in light of what he's showing us, what he wants to do. Because God is never showing you something and then say, now, now assess yourself as to whether you think you're capable of doing it. That's not how God works. All he's looking for is someone who will walk in obedience, who will trust him, and, and, and they will exercise their faith. We miss out on so many opportunities because of this self-imposed limitation and this perspective. By the time you get to the book of Joshua, generations have died off. And now God is saying, Joshua, you're the guy. And he helps him to recognize that by settling something for him. Moses is dead. Moses isn't coming back. Sometimes when we're dealing with self-imposed limitations, it's because we're still reminiscing over past things. And those things can hold us in a place that keep us from being able to really move forward in the new thing that God wants to do. God was clear to Joshua and said, now this is how you're going to break these self-imposed limitations. He said, you need to meditate on my word day and night. You need to meditate on my word day and night. Meditate on my word day and night. Get it on the inside of you. Then you will prosper and you will have good success. We looked at Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1. I love this passage of scripture. He says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I called you as a prophet to the nations. I love that because in that shows purpose and destiny for every person born. It shows purpose and destiny for every person born. The moment you and I get born again, the, more, the moment you and I are, are saved, Holy Spirit begins to help us to see why you have the giftings that you have and the workings that have been taking place in your life up to the point where God says, now I'm calling you, now I want to use you. But self-imposed limitations can keep us from hearing it and receiving it if we don't pull down those strongholds. Then there was Saul. We talked about Saul. Israel wanted a king. They wanted to be like all the other nations. So God picked someone that he knew that they would like. Saul was a coward. Saul was a coward. When they came to, to, uh, for, to get him for his coronation, he was hiding in the baggage. He saw himself so small that he would hide rather than step into purpose and destiny. When you're dealing with self-imposed limitations and you're dealing with seeing yourself small, you can always figure out a way not to be where you need to be. I want to say that again. When you're dealing with self-imposed limitations, opportunities present themselves, but you're overwhelmed by the opportunity that presents itself. You can often somehow, we just kind of work it out where, oh, I'm not going to be able to make that. I'm not going to be able to do that. But deep down inside, it's really a self-imposed limitation. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm not saying that hypothetically. I'm saying it because I've done it. No, uh, no, you know, I, you know, I got something else going on. When it's really self-imposed limitation, you'd rather stay where you're at then to press yourself, stretch yourself, break off whatever the fear is, the anxiety is, to move into the thing that God is presenting to you. Yes, it may challenge you. Most often, it will challenge you. And as a result of the condition of Saul's heart, he never really accepted what God was calling him to do. So ultimately, he lost the kingdom. Saul was more concerned with what the people would think than what God was telling him to do. When you're dealing with self-imposed limitations, often that's exactly where we're at. That's exactly where you're at. You're more concerned about what people are going to think and what people are going to say about the choices and decisions you make based on what God calls you to do. Ah. Well, 
well, I, I, know, I know this is what God is saying, but I, I'm not sure how my family's going to respond to this. When Jesus was confronted by his family who were watching him now as he started his, his, uh, his earthly ministry, and I like this, somebody, somebody shared this, I don't remember who, but they were talking about when Jesus started his ministry up till the age of 30, you know, he would go about doing it and he would come back and, you know, be with his mother and the family. And, and one, I heard one person say when Jesus started his, his ministry, it was like he didn't say, Mom, you know why I'm here. You know who I really am. I'm going now to start my ministry. And they said he probably just left and didn't come back. Think about that. He just left. It's like he walked out the door and didn't come back. Next thing you know, they hear some things. Now they're like, where's Jesus? Uh, well, you know what? Two, he left two days ago. I thought he'd be back, but he... You know, I heard he was over at so-and-so, so-and-so. And, and uh, they go, and, and they think something's wrong with him, and they're calling for him. And Jesus sends word back to them and says, uh, who is my mother? Who is my brother? But he that doeth the will of my father. It's like Jesus was saying, okay, I've moved on now. I've moved into the purpose for which I was born. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to let you handle how you're feeling. Deal with the thoughts you're having. Because I can't allow that to hinder me for what I know my Father has called me to do. It is really quiet in here. Man, I should have kept Pastor Jamal on them keys. Is this making sense to you? Is that, that's, why you, that's why you're quiet. It's like, ouch. Example was Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth, who was the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul. One of the things that we looked at and we talked about is that if you and I are not intentional to handle some of the self-imposed limitations in our lives, if we're not careful, they get passed down to future generations. And sometimes they may even skip a generation. But in the situation with Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth was a victim of a grandfather who had self-imposed limitations. So Jonathan, who's the son of Saul, becomes friends with David. They strike a covenant with each other. But King Saul and Jonathan are killed in battle. Mephibosheth, who's at the palace, now the, 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 the uh, nanny or whatever she was taking care of him, in order to save his life because she's thinking, I need to get him out of here because whoever uh, is coming next is going to try to kill all of the lineage of Saul. So no one can rise up later and challenge the throne. But in her haste to run with him, she falls. She trips and falls on him. And he ends up lame. And they end up down in, in Lodibar. Now, they end up in one of the worst places you could be in in that time. And that's the way he was raised. So there's nothing in his mind except one fear that if the king ever finds out I'm alive, I'm a dead man. Now we're talking about self-imposed limitations. He doesn't know that favor has already been set up for him. He doesn't know that there's a covenant in place. Come on, somebody. There's a covenant in place that guarantees the safety of his life that guarantees provision for him, that guarantees that once he comes into relationship with the king, uh, yeah, yeah, everything he could ever imagine is now made available. Once you come into relationship with the king of kings, 
everything you could ever imagine becomes available. I'm not hearing any of y'all. I know somebody out there watching on live stream is clapping right about now. Somebody send some clap emojis or something. Come on, I need to stir this up just a little bit. I know I'm teaching, but I'm going to have to preach this some just to get us in the mood of what I'm talking about here. See, we have got, we have got to move forward. We have got to move forward. And I'm speaking to those of you that are watching by way of, of Facebook and, and, and YouTube or whether you see it on our webpage. You've got to move forward. You have got to move forward. And I'm finding myself in this season kind of uh, uh, assessing and I'm recognizing that, that people are living in a lesser place than what God has intended. But they think they're all right. You think you're all right. But I'm telling you, it's deception. It's deception. I want to tell you this. If you don't have people still in your life that are telling you sometimes your stuff is whacked, if you don't have people in your life that are telling you, challenging you how to grow, how to develop, I'm telling you, you're in a place of deception. Because God has designed the body. We all need people in our lives who are able to look at us, love us, but tell us and speak the truth in love. You can run, but you can't hide. You can get by, but not away. You got to know at some point it's all going to it's all going to show up. It's all going to show up. By God's grace, He continues to speak to us. He continues to woo us. He continues He continues to to call us. That's because He loves us. Those He loves, He chases. Mephibosheth is living in a very, very, very poor state because he doesn't have the knowledge and the revelation of who he's connected to by way of a covenant. His own self-imposed limitations. And when we looked at that passage of Scripture, we remember that God, uh, that, that David speaks to Ziba and says, look, is there anyone of the household of Saul that I can show kindness to on behalf of Jonathan, he's saying on behalf of the covenant. He says, I think there's a guy down in uh, Lodi Bar named Mephibosheth, goes and gets him. And when he brings him, he doesn't question him. He just brings him in. Mephibosheth is questioning. Who am I but a dead dog? And I love it because, and I'm going to show you this in another passage of scripture. Here's, here's a point for all of us. When you and I are dealing with self-imposed limitations, hear me. Now let, me, let, me, let, me just, let me let me go back to this. When we're dealing with limits that have been set based on the way we think about ourselves, I need you to know this. Oftentimes, God ain't, God ain't gonna, he ain't going to relate to you there. He's not going to talk to you there. As a matter of fact, it's going to be like he just ignored everything you just said. Self-imposed limitations, limits that are based on the way you think about yourself and your surroundings. They are usually thoughts of being inferior, inadequate, or unprepared. They are thoughts that lead to feelings of intimidation, fear, fear of rejection, fear of failure, insecurities, insecurities, insecurities. Everybody has insecurities. Some, some, some get over them faster than others. Some never do get over them. They are thoughts and feelings that once brought down, pulled down, revealed that the basis for them was false and unfounded. So while Mephibosheth is navigating through his self-imposed limitations that I'm no, no better than a dog, David doesn't even, doesn't even recognize that comment. He doesn't even respond to that comment. He just says, desire from now on, everything that his, that his grandfather owned, he got it. It belongs to him now. Just a, a, a that's a Holy Ghost cha-ching. I mean, it's like all in that moment, his life changed. If you can understand that relative to salvation, you'll get a whole lot further, a whole lot faster. The very moment you got connected to Jesus, the King of Kings, everything changed. 
everything changed. I'm talking about breaking stronghold of self-imposed limits. Everything changed right then. Right there, I'm going to clap for myself because I'm reminding myself. Everything changed that day. Now, it may take a while for it all to begin to show up, but it changed right then. The moment you became born again, all of heaven stood up and said, this changes everything. This changes everything. And what Mephibosheth had to wrap his mind around real quick is that he went from being the poorest of the poor to a billionaire instantly. Wealth beyond anything that he could ever imagine. He went from being of the poorest of poor to now an employer with a staff. All who work the land now work for Mephibosheth. See, I want, I want you to understand that when we set ourselves in the right place, listen, God can override your self-imposed limitations. See, that's what he's doing here. That's what David is doing with Mephibosheth. I know you don't understand it. I know you think you're still dreaming. But you're going to wake up tomorrow and realize it's not a dream. You're going to wake up tomorrow and realize Ziba is working for you now. You're going to wake up and know that all the servants are working for you now. You're going to wake up and know that you can sit at my table anytime and eat with me because of your daddy, because of the covenant I had with your father. Now, I need you to hear me. That's what Jesus is saying to you and I. As a result of the covenant I have with my daddy, on your behalf, every morning you get up. It's a new day to walk in the blessings that have been provided for you. Some of the things that we also looked at, I'm talking about now some of the, some of the thoughts relative to self-imposed limitations is this. Self-imposed limitations have the ability to, to nullify any prophetic word you receive. I love prophetic ministry. God has given us the prophetic ministry. But if you're not hearing the word and really receiving the word, then that word just goes dormant. That word just goes dormant. Your mind, your self-imposed limitations can override God's word coming to you at any time. Now, God has the ability and there are times when he just kind of um, 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 uh, circumvents your thought processes for the sake of his purpose and his agenda. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When people are dealing with self-imposed limitations, that produces insecurities, they struggle with accepting generosity being shown to them as being genuine and, secure and, and sincere. It's, it's, like, it's like you want to bless somebody and they say, well, why are you doing this for me? Well, why wouldn't I do it for you? I mean, you're a nice person, aren't you? It's that self-imposed thing, the self-imposed thing going on. Self-imposed thing going on. Self-imposed. Whenever we're in a restaurant and... Uh, and I'm tipping the person, and, and they're saying, and I give them the tip, you know, or write the tip. Are, are you sure? Oh, you don't have to do that. What is that? Self-imposed limitation. I'm trying to bless you, and you're asking me, am I sure? Well, now that you asked that question, maybe I'm, maybe, maybe I'm not sure. No, that's not where you go with it. It's just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm what I, now, I'm overriding your self-imposed limitations. And I'm still going to bless you. Now, I just, I, I just, I love to be generous. Because I feel like the more generous I am, the more people are generous to me. The more God is generous to me. The principle says, given it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. That principle works on a number of different levels. And one of those is financially. 
I'm determined. I'm going to give my way into wealth. I'm going to give my way into wealth. Every time God blesses me, I'm blessing a few folk. Holy Spirit says, do this, I do this. Holy Spirit says, send this, send this. I just send it. I don't ask no questions. Well, what's going on with him? No, that, that's not what this is about. And sometimes people say, well, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> I know I didn't have to do it. You didn't have to do that. Self-imposed limitation. So I, I say to, to those that are serving, you know, I say, let's make this a teachable moment. When someone wants to bring increase to you like this, there's only two words you say. Thank you. Thank you. Unless you want to say, you got any more? <laughs> Just thank you. Just say thank you. That's how you break that self-imposed limitation that you're not worthy of it. See, most most servers and things, they, what is it, 15%, 18%, 20% now? So that's what, they're, that's what they are expecting at the most, 20%. If it's 20%, they think that's really good. But in the economy of the kingdom, try 50%. Try 120%. Meaning there's times when I'll go get a cup of coffee, that's all I get. And the tip is way over the cup of coffee. 10, 20 times, easy the cup of coffee. But that's not what this is about. So they're able to move past that self-imposed limitation. It raises their expectation. Matter of fact, when I come in, they already got an expectation. And I don't mind them having that expectation. After we eat, they'll say, uh, the usual? Yeah, the usual. <laughs> I'm not, I, listen, y'all, I'm not making this about me, but I'm just telling you how I'd like to live and how I believe God would have all of us to live. Self-imposed limitations are strongholds in the mind. Your heart can be stirred by the word of God, but your mind can keep you from seeing the manifestation of the word. That's why the mind has to be renewed uh, at the same time that, that, that the word is coming to you. When prophetic words come to you, when your mind is renewed, hear me, when your mind is renewed, you, your thinking is, why, while this word doesn't seem to fit my current situation, I believe this word can change my current situation. I believe this word is coming to me to help change my situation. I believe this word is coming to me to bring increase to me, to shift my life as it is currently. But if your mind isn't thinking that way, you will always take that word and you will examine it. You will weigh it based on your life and your circumstances or your past. And sometimes when you do that, it nullifies that word. In your heart, you receive it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I thank you for this word. I receive this word. But in your mind, it's going, and you're thinking about this, you're thinking about that. Or what about this? Or what about that? Yeah, you know what? That's a good word, but that, that, that word probably for somebody else because it ain't fitting. It ain't fitting with me. When in fact, God is saying, no, I'm bringing you this word that when you hear this word, change your mind. Change your mind. Change your mind. Years ago, we did, a, we did a teaching. We did a message on change your mind, change your future. Settle your mind, settle your future. Self-imposed limitation characteristics often show up in a limited small mindset. You, you see it show up in a person of, 
of their disposition of being unworthy, distrust, helplessness, hopelessness, fearful, small and insignificant. And that's the way they think about themselves. It's not arrogant or prideful to know who you are in God. It's not arrogant or prideful to walk into a room or a situation with the thought, I'm supposed to be here. I want to tell you that is a lie and it's deception of the enemy to make you and I live in such a pious place that we never live in a place of real power in the kingdom. So we live out of this small place and oh, hallelujah. Oh, bless God. And, and, and that's it. When, what, when what, what the Father's requiring you lie is that we're walking in authority. Amen. That when you walk in the room, somebody ought, to, some, somebody ought to know something just changed. Yeah. Something just shifted. Yeah. I'm talking about in the atmosphere. Yeah. Because when you walk in the room, not only do the people recognize you walked in the room, but the spirit realm recognizes you walked in the room. Self-imposed limitation characteristics are manifested in so low self-esteem, poor self-image, worry, anxiety, shame, poverty, lack. One of the things that I've found is that you can, you can be blessed of God and still live in self-imposed limitation. Meaning you still live small, you still live minimal, even though God has blessed you. I believe in being prudent. At the same time, if we are not mindful, we can live in a space where what God has blessed us with has not increased our capacity to not only believe for more, but see the reality of the more. And so we continue to operate in God's blessing, but not to the degree that he wants to. And I want to say to many of us here, and those that are watching, allow Holy Spirit to help you to examine that. Examine yourself. Am I hearing this, but I'm still living out of places of self-imposed limitations? So I'm only willing to go so far. I'm still living in this place of safe faith. Because you have to recognize this. When you're dealing with poverty and lack, that's spiritual. And it is a mentality. So you can have millions of dollars and still be poor. Poor in spirit, poor in your mind, poor in your thinking. It is the assignment of the enemy and the princes of darkness to see that you and I never come into a complete place of freedom from all self-imposed limitations. It takes regular examination of ourselves to get completely free, to move out into new things in God. If the enemy can keep you from knowing and receiving the word of God for yourself, he will keep you from living in and enjoying your covenant rights. It's the principle of the, of the sower who sows the seed. The scripture talks about he sows seed on stony ground and, and he sows the seed in good soil. It talks about how that, when, how that when a word is sown, it's received in the moment, but then life chokes it out and it never really brings forth fruit. It talks about the word that's sown that the enemy comes and immediately steals. The word that's sown on stony ground so it never takes any root. 
There's times when we must examine ourselves as to the word that we're hearing. Are we really receiving it for ourselves? Is it producing any real fruit? Is it producing any real change? Because if it is, you should be able to start tracking and seeing the covenant blessings manifested in areas of your life. It is the renewing of the mind through the word of God that helps us to see ourselves in light of the redemptive work of the cross and who we are in Christ. Sometimes we can stay in a condition so long and we have in our mind only one way to get out of it that we're not open to another way that God wants to do it. That's a self-imposed limitation. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Come on, say, show us, Apostle. <laughs> I just wanted to see if y'all was listening. Thank you. In John, the fifth chapter, we looked at this some time ago as related to Mephibosheth. In John, the fifth chapter, I know that's kind of small, so you're going to have to uh, just, just listen to it. Is it can y'all see it? <laughs> you can't see it? Okay. I know I should have put it on two slides, but just listen. Now, there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called, now let me back up. So you see what it says there at the top, John 5, 2 through 9. Can y'all see that? You see what it says next to it? Okay, you can see that. That's good. That's, that's the point. I did. All right, all right. Just look at somebody and say, no more lame excuses. No more lame excuses. Now, there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porticles. In these lay a multitude of those who were sick, blind, lame, and withered, waiting for the moving of the waters, for an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons, say seasons, certain seasons into the pool and stirred up the water. Whoever then First, say first. Yeah. Whoever then first, after the stirring of the water, stepped in, was made well from whatever disease with which he was afflicted. Mm -hmm. A man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew he had been there a long time in that condition. He said to him, do you wish to get well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no one, no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, meaning he's trying to make his way there because he's laying Another steps down before me. Now, there's a couple of takeaways for this that I, I want us to get as we talk about breaking stronghold, self-imposed limitations and moving past our frame of thought that God will only move a certain way. I want you to see this so he asked the man, do you want to be healed? I'm reading this and I'm thinking to myself, he didn't answer Jesus' question. As a matter of fact, go to that next slide. I think y'all can see this one. He did not answer Jesus' question. Now listen, can y'all see that? Maybe a little bit. But rather, listen to this, but rather he filtered the question through his present reality and therefore ascertained, came to the conclusion that in order for healing to happen, it would need to be within the same limiting constraints 
he had been living in. Jesus is saying, do you want to be healed? He's not answering that question. He's telling him why he's not healed. And sometimes that's exactly what's happening with you and I. That's why I'm of the conviction, Kevin, that when we pray, we don't have to say a whole lot of words. Sometimes we're praying and we're, trying, we're telling God about the situation. He said, I, I got the situation. I know what's going on. What I want to know is do you want to, and whatever it is. He says, do you want to be healed? He says, he says I have no one to put me in the water. When the water he, Jesus, that ain't what I ask you. But again, he filtered the question through his present reality. See, He's now thinking about, okay, he asked me if I want to be healed, but if I'm going to be healed, I'm going to need to wait for the angel to come back again at the right season and stir the water, but I'm still dealing with the same situation because every time I try to get to the water, there's no one to help me get to the water. Someone else gets there first. And so I, I know what he's asking me, but I don't think that it could ever happen because nothing has changed for me. But what he didn't know was the one he was talking to came to change everything. See, Jesus wasn't saying, can you tell me why you've been here so long? He, scripture says Jesus knew he had been there a long time. He didn't say, now why is it you can't get healed? That's not what he asked him. So he came to the conclusion that in order for the healing to take place, it would need to happen within the same limiting constraints he had been living in up to that point. And one of the points that I want you and I to get today is that, is that God is saying to us, when I step into your situation, it changes everything about that situation and what it will take for that situation to change. Now, I need you to trust me in it and not think that I have to work out of the same constraints that others have worked out of or that you have been living in up to this point. I came to change it. I came to break off of you the self-imposed limitations. So my question to you is, what is in your life that is on hold because you keep filtering it through your past, present conditions and reality, constraints, rather than the lens of the covenant that you have through Christ? I need you to think about that for a moment. What is, what is it in your life that is on hold? Because every time Holy Spirit comes to you and says, we're going to do this, now you're trying to see it through the filter of your situation, and you're saying, I don't know how this can happen because everything still looks the same. That's why Jesus had to say to his disciples, now guys, here's what I need you to do. Because for a while, it's going to look like nothing's changed. It's going to look like I'm like some of the other guys that came before me who said that they were thus and so and gathered a group of people. But here's what I'm giving you to go with. He said, you're going to go into these homes, and you're going to heal the sick. And you're going to cast out devils, and then you're going to tell them that the kingdom has come. That's your calling card. That's going to help them to know I'm not like these other guys. That the moment I showed up, it changed everything. What this man wasn't realizing is, once Jesus engaged him, it changed everything. From the very moment he said, do you want to be healed? And so I ask you the question again, what is it in your life that is on hold? Because you keep filtering it through your past, present conditions and reality. I'm not old enough. I'm not wise enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't have enough money. I don't know how this could ever happen. I tried it before and I failed. What is it in your life that's on hold? Because you keep filtering it through your past, present condition and reality that have become those constraints rather than the lens of the covenant 
that you have through Christ. As believers, the more we embrace the covenant that we have, the more free we get. And we recognize that in God, there is no limitations. We sang it last week, no limits, no boundaries. I see increase all around me. Stretch forth, break forth, release me, release me, release me. Release me. Enlarge my territory. No limits, no boundaries. I see increase all around me. I see increase all around me. We sang that song for years and 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 years. I told Pastor David, Derek, some of you may be aware, Pastor Derek, who's been with us, he wrote that song, recorded it some years ago. I'd be riding in my car listening to that song, weeping. No limits, no boundaries. I see increase all around me. Stretch forth, break forth, release me, enlarge my territory. Going back to this passage in John, he says, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another man steps down before me. And I could just imagine Jesus said, well, good luck with that. And just went on about his business. But thank God he doesn't do that, does he? He doesn't do that. What I love about this passage is what I see with David. And Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth said, uh, who am I but a dead dog? Mephibosheth didn't even, didn't even respond to that. He said, because this isn't about what you think about you. To this man that's lame, he's saying, this has nothing to do with what it used to be. He didn't even answer him. It says, Jesus said to him, get up. Pick up your pallet and walk. Immediately the man became well and picked up his pallet and began to walk. I like, I like to think that, I mean, there's different ways you can look at it, that Jesus was very compassionate and said, get up and walk. But, you know, I, I like to think, too, that he just put a little something on it. Get up. Come on. You ain't got to worry about that ever again. Just come on. Just get up. Jesus is saying, I'm circumventing all of that. That process is over for you. You're free now. Those self-imposed limitations that you think the only way that this can happen. The only way you think that this can happen, I'm talking to somebody right now on live stream. The only way you think it can happen, God's saying, I'm circumventing it right now. I'm moving around it right now. And all I need from you is the same word. All I need from you is a yes. All I need from you is a yes. Because you see, that's all he needed from the man when he said, do you wish to be healed? Yes, it's done. I'm saying to some of you prophetically now, all you have to say is just yes. Some of you in this room, come on, you just need to say yes. As a matter matter of fact, just say yes a few times, even though you don't know what you're saying yes to. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now, now I have to caution you because some of those yeses are going to cost you just a little bit. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Yes, Jesus. I'm saying yes in advance. I'm saying yes in advance. I'm saying yes before you come to me and you ask me about it. I'm saying yes right now. I'm saying yes before my mind gets engaged and I start trying to think about what this yes is about. I'm just saying yes. Because I trust you. I know that you love me. I know that you care for me. And I know at the end of the day, whatever this yes is about, I thank you. That it's going to work for my good and for your glory. Jesus knew full well this man, what this man was used to. 
and yet was offering him by way of one simple answer. Yes, the opportunity to bypass the process that was not working for the man anyway and kept him lame and afflicted. So, one more question for you. What is it in your life that's not working? Has not been working? That God wants to bypass, circumvent, and all he wants from you is a straight answer. Yes. I feel you. I feel you. Sometimes we think we can outthink God. We think we can outthink God. You will lose your mind trying to outthink God. What is it in your life that is not working, has not been working, that God wants to bypass, circumvent, and all he wants from you is a straight answer? Yes. No more. Lame excuses. No more lame excuses. No more lame excuses. I'm going to lead you in this prayer. I'm going to lead you in this, this short prayer and declaration. Those that are watching by way. Uh, of the live stream as well. As we end out this time, and, and then Pastor George, you, you can come up and lead us in our giving. And, and uh, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. This is a sobering kind of atmosphere, isn't it? I hope you can feel it um, the live stream. This, this is, this is kind of sobering. You know, you want to say amen, but you're saying ouch. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. I was waiting for Sandra to say, my Lord. That's it. <laughs> my Lord. Hallelujah. Is that D flat? Thank you. So, just right where you are, just close your eyes, and those that are watching by way of live stream, do the same. Don't want to miss this moment. We don't want to miss this moment. This time with you. Thank you. Lord, I don't want to miss this moment. I don't want to miss this moment I don't want to miss this moment This time with you I can only imagine that the man at the pool after having been healed, just saying, I'm, I'm so glad I didn't miss the moment. I'm so glad that I didn't stay stuck in my mind, that I think it needs to happen a certain way. And 
So right where you're at, just allow Holy Spirit to show you anywhere, any area that's become a self-imposed limitation. Allow Holy Spirit to show you any area right now, those that are watching as well, just any area. Where you've been filtering God's plan, his invitation through a lens that's caused you to be limited by constraints that Jesus has already broken. What is it in your life that's on hold? And right now, Holy Spirit is saying, let's pull down those thoughts so that you can see clearly all that God has done and all that he wants to do. What is it in your life that's not working, has not been working, that God wants to bypass, circumvent, and all he wants you to do is come into agreement and say yes. Sometimes because of those self-imposed limitations, we can make one excuse after another, one excuse after another. And if that's been you, take this moment and say, Holy Spirit, help me not to make any more excuses. God, I surrender to your will. I surrender to your way. I do not want to miss this moment. I do not want to miss you. Father, I thank you for this moment, this sobering moment right now. And I thank you for Holy Spirit that's moving right now, here in this room and on those that are watching online, that right now you're helping us to identify self-imposed limitations, the way that we have been thinking that keeps us feeling less than what you've intended. Father, I thank you that you're showing us areas that we have accepted that have caused, caused us to stay in a certain place when in fact you have more for us and we simply need to say yes to your leading to receive the new, the different, the better the best that you have. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's begin to thank the Lord right now. You know, you know, you know. And so, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't want to miss this moment. 